And so here, sa homiletical presentation, sa atin pong working definition ng expositor preaching, it's the exposition of a, one basic passage of Scripture, one basic passage, one complete pericope, one complete idea, which through an exegetical investigation, number one, discovers its original meaning. After we've done that, and by theological reflection, determines its implication, which the Holy Spirit first applies to the preacher. Dapat ikaw ang unang mabago ng preaching mo, ng sermon mo, who then, by homiletical presentation, delivers its message to effect change in the hearts of the listeners. The purpose, the goal of preaching is not only information but transformation. We need to bring them to a point where they have to make decisions. 180 degree decisions. And so that's the goal of every sermon. Now, in Toronto, I'm uh, preaching more in Pentecostal churches. My ministry, the Apollos Project, is more needed in Pentecostal groups, among Pentecostal groups. Kaya pumunta ko sa Cuba, Nicaragua, all Pentecostals lahat yan. They know that my background is Baptist, but you know, they're able to at least save. They can see that they really need to study what the Word of God is saying. And so we're trying to bring in balance. Alright? And so, medyo yun ang Baptist-Costal na nga yung approach natin. And so, we want to balance filled with the Spirit but founded in the Scriptures. Yan po yung ating uh, gustong uh, gawin. Now that we have the sermon, friends, this is not yet the sermon. A sermon only becomes a sermon when you preach it from the pulpit. Piece of paper, just, mess, just a bunch of notes, hindi pa po sermon yan. And so here, the effectiveness of sermons depends on two factors. It depends on two factors. Blanks in your notes. Number one, the content, what we say, and the delivery, how we say it. The effectiveness of any sermon is dependent on two factors. What you say and how you say it. May mga pastor na talaga naman yung content, medyo wala masyadong content. You know, wala masyadong research, hindi masyadong deep. Talagang parang hindi masyadong napag-isipan. Pero, kapatid, yung delivery, wow! Ang galing! Talaga namang on fire na on fire si pastor, yung delivery niya. So, kahit na medyo malamya yung content, pero yung delivery naman talagang powerful, nababawi rin. Pero kapatid, may mga pastor, napakaganda ng content, talagang deep, talagang pinag-isipan, ang galing ng content. Pero yung delivery, very anemic, wala masyadong pwersa. Kaya nasasayang yung content. Alright? So kailangan balance. Maganda na yung content, magaling pa yung delivery. Now, obviously, when we talk like this, we're not saying it's all dependent on the technique in the delivery. Kasi, friends, yung, yung communication, lalo na yung spiritual communication, has to do with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Yung working ng Holy Spirit, yan talaga ang pinakakijan. And your walk with God, your intimacy with God will bleed through your sermon. Kaya nandun yung anointing natin. Kahit na hindi ka pa sigaw-sigaw, medyo ano ka lamang salita, pero yung anointing napakabigat. Kaya friends, that's where we need to uh, do it. So, content and delivery. So, what makes us chicken out? What makes us chicken out? What causes us to be afraid? According to Bruce Wilkinson, there are at least two giants. There are several giants he mentioned. And let me just point out two giants that causes us to be afraid. Na hindi natin maibigay yung ating full uh, delivery. Number one is the giant of intimidation. The giant of intimidation. What's the word inside intimidation? Timid. And so itong giant of intimidation is the giant who makes us feel timid or afraid. Friends, ito po yung external, uh, external pressure. What you see on the outside, that can cause you to be intimidated. When I preach in a congregation, tapos makita kong mga maraming mga puti, ba, merong konting intimidation sa akin yan. Kasi right now, I have to speak in complete English kasi nandun, maraming mga puti. That, that becomes an intimidation for me. 
So intimidation has to do with what you see on the outside, external to. The biggest group I had in the Apollos Project was about 1,000. Can you imagine 1,000 people attending the Apollos Project? I had that in Cebu. Ang hirap, 1,000 katao. Step number one, the first letter R. Step number two, ang lalaki ng gestures mo kasi an 1,000 eh. And so, again, this is external. It makes you feel timid. What you see can cause you to be timid or be intimidated. But then the second giant is the giant of inhibition. To inhibit yourself is to restrain yourself to feel uncomfortable about doing something. Now, this one is not external. This is internal. Internal to itong inhibition. It's how you view yourself. So kapatid, yung intimidation, how you view others, how you view your audience. Yung inhibition, how you view yourself. Kung mababa yung iyong image, self-image mo is low. You know, lumaki ka, parati mo narinig sa tatay mo, bobo kang bata ka, bobo kang bata ka. Lumaki ka, naku, bobo nga talaga ako. You know, ang baba ng tingin mo sa sarili mo. Kahit na yung audience mo, mga small kids, audience mo, small kids, Sunday school, nanginginig ka. Kasi yung tingin mo sa sarili mo, napakababa. This is something internal. It inhibits you from doing what is right, from giving your best. Friends, the way you counter inhibition at saka intimidation, these are giants just in your mind. They are all in your minds. The way to uh, attack these giants is repentance. Because you know, the key here is pride. The number one problem is pride. Kapag external, because you want to please people, kaya ka natatakot. But friends, kahit na may mga puti dyan, kahit na may mga Amerikano dyan, just give your best and leave the rest to God. Don't care about what they will say about you. God called you to be the preacher, hindi sila. Kahit na may mga PhD sila, ikaw wala. God called you to be there, hindi sila. And so, set your mind right. Repent. This is about pride. Lord, I don't care anong sasabihin nila. I just want to give my best. And then, of course, yung inhibition. Remember, God has called you to preach. God sees something good about you. Your dad, your mom may not have seen anything good about you, but God sees something good about you. God chose you to be the Sunday school teacher, to be the preacher. Friends, the Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy, basahin natin lahat. Ready? Read. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and love and a sound mind. But of power and love and a sound mind. And so again, it's all in the mind. We just have to repent because the basic problem is pride. Let's give it our best. So first letter P, write down in your notes, the purpose of the preacher. The purpose of the preacher. The mindset. We need to clear our minds Especially mga wrong motivation. Why do you want to really preach well? Gagandahan ko tong preaching ko para malaki yung love gift. Patay na, talo ka na. Sa purpose pa lang, talo ka na. And so here's the purpose of the preacher, friends. Begin by focusing on the reality that you are delivering the message the Lord has given you to bless His people. Be driven by the truth that the Lord has mandated you to preach His word. Remember that eternal consequences hang in the balance as you stand behind the pulpit this consciousness will compel you to deliver that, that sermon the most powerful way you can. You know, every time I preach, I just imagine somebody there in my audience who badly needs this sermon. Who badly needs this sermon. Remember, I'm shaping the sermon, the theological reflection. I'm thinking of a, of a particular audience. Iniisip ko ganitong klaseng tao. May taong ganitong pangangailangan, may taong ganitong na-experience, yan ang gusto kong targetin sa sermon. You just think of that one audience. Siya parang kinakausap mo. And you know what will happen? It will touch everyone else. You just focus on one. Imagine that one person, yung kanyang eternal consequences, the decisions that he's going to make is dependent on that one sermon. Kaya your purpose is clear. For the glory of God. But then secondly, your passion. From the mind, you go to the heart. From the mind, you go to the heart. And so dito na the passion of the preacher is your desire to do it well. Your desire to do it well. The passion of the preacher. Dito, 
A deep sense of purpose will help you generate the passion to preach. Effective delivery begins with a deep desire to preach the truth. As one gets absorbed in the realization of becoming a mouthpiece for God and enraptured by the glory of the truth to be declared, they produce the essential stimulus for good delivery. This gives the preacher the proper, the, the emotional set to preach and the proper frame of mind to fulfill such a solemn responsibility. So the mind is clear and then yung passion mo to give it the best way you can. Remember friends, naka-black, naka-box naka, naka just sa notes ninyo. Let's read this together. Effective delivery begins with desires. If you don't want to say it well, you won't. It begins with desires. And so that means you want to do it well. Hindi to yung basta-basta na lang. You want to do it well. And remember friends, the next box there, preach as if it is your last. That's the right mindset. Preach as if it is your last. You know, I'm giving this seminar. This could be my last. I do not know what will happen tomorrow. Nobody can predict here that all of us will still be alive tomorrow. But whenever you are preaching, give it your best because that could be your last. So yan yung proper frame of mind. Yan yung mindset natin. And that gives us the passion to preach it well. Alright? Preach as if it is your last. And then next is the pattern of the preacher. The pattern of the preacher. Obviously, from the mind to the heart and now the will. The pattern is the will. You need to make some choices. You cannot be just, you know, gusto kong maging Chuck Swindoll, gusto kong maging John MacArthur. I mean, you cannot copy all these great preachers. You have to make choices how you're going to be, how you're going to preach. Hindi natin pwedeng gayahin lang yung mga preachers na yan. Kasi that's their own style. Iba naman yung style natin. And you'll just be frustrated because God has given you a different personality. God has given you a different audience. And so dito, we need to make some choices sa pattern natin. Number one, you can of course read the manuscript. That's obviously a pattern. Pero kapatid, ang suggestion ko, kung babasahin mo rin lang yung sermon mo, ipaserox mo na lang, bigyan mo ng bawat isang kopya. Sige, umuwi na kayo, basahin nyo yan. Yan ang sermon ko ngayong umagang to. Mas, ma mas masasayahan pa yung mga tao. Kasi mahirap magbasa ng inaantok, di ba? And so again, you can read the manuscript. But, of course, you can recite from memory. If you recite from memory, halatang-halata pag nag-memorize ang tao. Kasi pag may nakalimutan ka, babalikan mo yung previous sentence para ma-regain mo yung, yung uh, flow ng na-memorize mo. But, of course, you can also render it extemporaneously. You know, rending extemporaneously, maganda sana yan kung talaga yung mind mo, you are able to express yourself well in the language that you're going to use in your preaching. Napakaganda ng rendering it extemporaneously. But then, fourthly, you can also recount freely. Recounting it freely, that means nag-prepare ka, but you, are, you have mastered it enough that you can recount freely. You don't even need the manuscript in front of you. Friends, ang suggestion natin ganito. Suggestion natin, you make a composite approach. A composite approach. There are some portions that you read. Okay lang yung magbasa, it's a quotation. You don't have to memorize the quotation. You can read that. So may mga portion, pwede mong basahin. May portion you recite from memory. You're going to relate a story. Maganda yung story, ha? Parang talagang na-personalize mo, rinirelate mo from memory. And then, of course, you just render it extemporaneously. May mga portions dyan na, you know, you're just able to deliver it uh, without any notes. But then, of course, you can recount freely. And so based on your notes, you've mastered it, you're able to recount freely. So yung composite approach, nung apat na yan, just deliver your own style sa pagpre-preach mo. I mean, it's okay. We can copy some of the, uh, you know, what people are doing. Sometimes may kinokopy ako dito mga words na ginagamit nila. Sometimes meron silang manirisim na gusto kong kopyahin. Like si, ano, ang ganda ng manirisim ni, ano, ni um, Adrian Rogers. Patay na, no? Adrian Rogers. Pero, kasi yung pulpit niya, mga ten, ano yan eh, ten steps eh. Ten steps yung pulpit niya eh. Nandiyan, ano? Ten steps yung pababa. Nandiyan yung audience niya. Alam mong ending na siya, bababa na yan towards the end. Magbibigay na ng exhortation niya. You know what he's trying to communicate? I'm now on the same level with you. We're just one in this. I'm not preaching above you. I'm now preaching with you. So bababa na yan doon. And then he will end his sermon in that particular application. So sabi ko, ganda niya na. Okay yan. And so I try to copy that. Yung iba naman, you know, 
But you cannot just copy everything. Kailangan i-contextualize mo naman. Kasi meron naman dyan sobrang western, hindi mo naman pwedeng kopyahin. Meron nga isang associate pastor, big church, yung senior pastor sa umaga. Sa hapon, sa gabi, kanya, different audience. Eh, one Sunday morning, sabi ng senior pastor, ganito opening niya, nandiyan yung associate pastor, nakaupo. Sabi ng senior pastor, good morning everyone. I have a confession to make this morning. There is another woman in my life. Another woman to whom I promise that my love will never fade. That other woman is my mother. Happy Mother's Day. All right, ba talagang kinabahan yung mga tao? Kala nila, naku, laglag na yung pastor namin. Pero yun, kinabahan lang sila. Happy Mother's Day. Okay. Eh nakikinig yung associate pastor, sabi niya, gagayahin ko yung mama yung gabi. <laughs> Different audience eh. Ibang audience naman. Pagkagabi na service, ginaya niya, sabi niya. Good evening everyone. I have a confession to make. There's another woman in my life. A woman to whom I promise that my love will never fade. That other woman is our senior pastor's mother. <laughs> Kinopya lahat. <laughs> Patay. <laughs> Nako, hindi pe pwede. <laughs> Huwag mong kopya yung lahat. You have to contextualize. <laughs> Mamihira. Napakalaking issue tuloy nun. And so here, number four, the presence of the preacher. The presence of the preacher. Dito sa presence, your mind is set, your heart is set, your will is set. You know exactly what you want to do. Pagpasok mo ng pulpit to, ito tinatawag na pulpit presence. Pagpasok mo. Pagtawag sa'yo kung kailangan ka tawagin. Kailangan pag tinatawag ka, galing ka sa baba, excited ka. Kasi yung mga tao, ba excited ha? Kasi pag halatang-halatang natatakot ka. Kaganyan ka. Yung mga tao, naku, patay na. Ano kayo mangyayari na ito? Wala na yung concentration nila, hindi na nakikinig yan. Naghihintay na lang, saan kayo makakamali ito? Saan kayo makakamali ito? Kailangan nandun yung, you exude that confidence. Kaya nga kailangan covered with prayer. Talagang nag-pray ka talaga eh. You know, you exude that spirit-inspired confidence. So dito sa pulpit presence, unang-una na yung appearance mo eh. The way you dress. The way you dress. Dapat yung damit mo naman, huwag naman yung sobrang layo sa audience. You know, naka-short, naka-t-shirt lahat, tapos so ikaw naka-Amerikana. Ang layo mo eh. Naka-short, naka-t-shirt, tapos naka-Amerikana ka. Dapat yan, standard is one notch above your audience lang. One notch above your audience. Hindi man pwedeng naka-short lang ako dito, naka-t-shirt. Because what I'm communicating, you're not really important. I don't care kung sino kayo, basta naka-short lang ako dito. I'm not respecting my audience. Ako naman, one notch above the audience lang. Kaya, wag naman yung sobra naman. Grabe naman yung damit na ganyan. Para namang sobra naman. Violet pa yung sapatos. May sunglasses pa. May pastor kasi, pag nag-pre-preach siya, naka-sunglass. Sabi ko, bakit ka naman nagsa-sunglass? Yung pala, binabasa niya lang yung notes niya para hindi makita yung mata niya nagbabasa. Naka-sunglass siya. Wow. That becomes a barrier in preaching. So, when you're preaching, yung clothing mo, the best clothing is not notice, it is simply appropriate and attractive. One notch above your audience. Number two is your posture. The way you stand behind the pulpit. May mga mannerisms tayo na kailangan mapag-aralan, we need a good feedback. May mga preachers na iba, unconsciously, they are rocking, ganyan-ganyan sila. Good morning everyone. You know, this sermon this morning is something very important. Ganyan, ganyan. Yung mga tao, ganyan ang ganyan mga tao. <laughs> And so, meron kaming in-invite sa Cebu, taga Singapore. Not his fault. It's not his fault because he had a stroke. Because he had a stroke, he cannot control his left hand. Ganyan ang ganyan yung left hand niya. May stroke siya, hindi niya makontrol. Eh. Pero after ng service, naglapitan, nakailan ka bro? 105 ako eh. <laughs> Nagbibilang na lang pala. <laughs> Binibilang na lang. Nakaka-distract kasi. May mga mannerisms. Instead of focusing on the sermon, nawawala sila kasi yung mga mannerisms natin. And that's why we need to ask feedback from people. Ano ba yung mga mannerisms natin na, you know, we can minimize this or we can change this. 
So, paano ka mag-preach? Huwag naman yung nakaupo. Sobra naman yung nakaupo. May kape pa. Ha? Nag-preach. Si ano ngayon kasi nakaupo na lang eh. Charles Stanley, si ano pa? Kasi teaching naman yung kay Charles eh. Hindi naman preaching talaga. Okay lang ako po, nagtiteach eh. Talagang preaching Sunday sa San Antonio, Texas. Si ano? Yung mataba? Si, ha? Si John Hagen, nakaupo na. Kasi yung weight niya, hindi niya nakaya eh. Okay, nakaupo na lang siya. Pero again, pwede mo sabihin biblical yan. Kasi sa Bible, Jesus Christ sat down and taught the people. Kasi yan yung original way of authoritative preaching. Teaching is by sitting down. Kaya meron ngang ex cathedra eh, yung si St. Peter, yung uh, out of the chair. But friends, you need to be conscious. Think about your posture. Do you slouch, rock, stand by the podium or lean? Yung nakaslouch ka, nakaganyang ka. You know, iba na yung, ano mo, yung uh, position mo. And then of course, you stand by the podium, nakaganyang ka mag-preach. Good morning everyone. You know, this sermon is very important. Hindi importante kasi yung tayo mo nakaganyan eh. Pagka-importante, morning everyone, you know this sermon is something very, kita mo nyo yung ganyang class symposium. Kasi you're trying to grab people because this is really important. Ibig sabihin, consistent yung tayo mo sa gusto mong sabihin. Alright? And so, do you lean on the podium? Posture. Mannerism. And then of course, yung face. The way we project our face. Friends, Is it possible to show the feeling and information without words? Is that possible? Oh yes. What does this communicate? Nalang happy yan, ano? How about this one? Sad, frustrated. How about this one? Yung, wow, talagang awesome talaga yung kanyang dating na ano. And so again, our face, we communicate through our face. You cannot say, you know what? I was so angry last night. I was so angry. Eh, wala, nakatawa kay. Kaya dapat consistent yung sinasabi mo. Friends, you are the message. Remember that you have more than 80 muscles in your face and are capable of making more than 7,000 different facial expressions. More than 7,000. Can you imagine that? Sabi ni Charles Spurgeon, If you want to talk about heaven, let your face radiate the beauty of heaven. If you want to talk about heaven, let the beauty of heaven just just be seen in your face. But when you talk about hell, your ordinary face will do. Okay, na yan. Medyo na intindi ako na yung hell. But friends, we know that we cannot face our problem if the problem is our face. So yan na medyo problema yan. But the face and then the eyes, the eyes. How do you use your eyes when preaching? Hindi po effective preaching yung eyes na ganito. Good morning everyone. You know, I'm so excited about this sermon this morning. Wala, inhibited yan, you're just looking down. Good morning everyone. You know, this sermon this morning is something very important. Wala, intimidated yan, he's just looking up. He cannot look at his audience. You cannot do, good morning everyone. You know, the, the sermon this morning is something that you and I, wala, you're not really making an eye contact, pag ganun-ganun lang yung ulo mo. But you cannot also say, good morning everyone. You know, the sermon this morning is something you and I, epileptic style yan. The most effective way to use your eyes is you talk to somebody just for a few seconds and then move ahead to another person, point to somebody, good morning everyone. You know, the sermon this morning is something you and I can really benefit from. I want you to hear this sermon this morning because this sermon can truly make a difference in your life today. Just for a few seconds, lipat-lipat ka. So wag naman yung sa isa ka lang, good morning everyone. You know this sermon this morning is something you and I can really learn about. You can really learn something from this sermon. Wala na. Ikaw na lang talagang dapat magbago niyan. Wala nang iba. The use of your eyes. Friends, remember you need to make people be part of the group. That means you need to talk people who are farthest kasi the people who are bored easily are the people outside. The people at the fringes. Kasi parang hindi sila kasama eh. Parang dito lang parati nakatingin yung preacher eh. Kaya you need to point to them. You need to talk to them. Kaya pag gusto mo silang kausapin, ituro mo. Para alam nila sila kinakausap mo. You know what? This morning, this sermon is something, yun, parang kinakausap mo lang sila. And then you look at them, 
just for a few seconds, na hindi sila uncomfortable. The gestures, the gestures, of course, is the use of your hands. And uh, improper gestures, if you're inhibited, pagka-inhibited ka, I saw a tall man yesterday. Tall man, sino yan? Si Sakeus. <laughs> ano tall man? Kasi inhibited ka eh. If you're intimidated, you know what? I saw a big bear last night. Big bear, yan na yan? Big bear na yan? Chan mo lang yan ah. Big bear na ba yan? <laughs> Dapat, I saw a tall man yesterday. I saw a big bear last night. You know, sometimes hindi ka maka-extend ng ganyan kasi basang-basa ka rito. You know, hindi ka makataas ng ganyan. Again, there are things that can inhibit you. But ito po yung uh, area where you are allowed. This one, of course, is the comfort zone. Pero tung red portion na yan, that's all yours. You can extend your hand. You, the bigger the crowd, the bigger the gestures. The bigger the crowd, the bigger the gestures. All right? And then finally, we have the movement. The movement. So sa pulpit presence natin, kasama yung movement. What is best? May movement or walang movement? Pag walang movement, nandito ka lang, yung, yung ulo ng tao nakaganyan lang. The only way they can go now is go that way. Pag ganun lang. At least kung kumikilos ka, yung neck medyo na-exercise pa ng konti. In fact, you can go down. Pero wag ka naman yung tumatakbo ko ng layong nasa. Saan yung sasalita ni Pastor? You need to be where people can see you kasi they not only need to hear, but they need to see who's talking. So itong area na to yan yung red spot, that's the boring spot. Of course, orange is okay, but the yellow is yours. And so sometimes we have to think in advance, paano ko ba itong uh, ano ha? Minsan I try to measure with the microphone, iisipin mo saan yung nagpi-feedback hanggang dito lang ko. So ibig sabihin, may boundary ka rin Kasi pag sumobra ka dyan, may feedback na. Dito, susubukan ko, mic test, mic test, may feedback, ops, may feedback hanggang dito lang ako. So you try to measure hanggang saan ka before you preach. This is when you're invited in some other place. Of course, you try to yun na, kailangan mo alamin yung, uh, yung position mo when you're preaching.